I saw a quote recently from the senior executive vice president of NFL operations, Troy Vincent, saying, American football is for all. It's a global game, an all-inclusive sport that provides the opportunity for all ages to enjoy the values, fan, and competitive environment unique to the sport of football. I laughed to myself after reading that. This game is called American football. There's no way that this is a global game. Sure, many different countries watch American football, but no country's even halfway there in terms of competing with an actual American football game. I'll probably get in trouble with my American peers for saying the phrase American football in the first place. To us, this game is just football. Other than Canada, I couldn't think of a country that played American football other than the US professionally. I've seen clips of games in other countries, and it usually doesn't match the kind of league that the US or even Canada has. It's not like other sports, where many countries can play it competitively against the US. Let's be honest, a lot of countries can hold their own in almost any other sport with the US. I saw a post pop up on Reddit recently about a team in Japan that ended their college football program after they caught a few of their players using illegal drugs. I had to do a double take. My American ignorance started to kick in. They play football in Japan? As I read the post, my mind started to become blown. This team, Nihon University Phoenix, was a 21-time national champion in Japan, and they decided to cancel the program after players were caught taking illegal drugs. I'm probably butchering exactly why the team got canceled, but the post talked about how Japan had been playing American football for around 90 years and that they had a highly organized college and professional league. I started to do my own research on American football in Japan, and I couldn't believe how big it was. So, I decided to make a video about American football in Japan. I'll be giving an overview of the history of Japan playing football, and then I'll briefly go over their college and professional leagues. You're watching the College Football History Channel, and this is American Football in Japan. Before we begin the video, I wanted to share that as of my last video, around 99% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel. Gaining organic subscribers is a great way for a small channel like mine to gain traction and become successful. So, make sure to click on the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Now, back to the video. Full disclosure, I try my best to look up how to say many of the Japanese cities and names in this video. So, I might not pronounce everything 100% correctly, but I tried my best to look up the correct way to pronounce everything. The story of American football in Japan starts with two men, Heta Okabe and Paul Rush. Heta Okabe is supposedly the first Japanese person to ever learn football and to teach it to others in Japan. Okabe was a great athlete, spending much of his life promoting Japanese traditional martial arts and promoting modern sports in Japan. He attended the University of Chicago in 1917 and was able to study sports management under the guidance of legendary coach Amos Alonzo Stagg. Sports historian Paul Putz was able to find several telegrams and documents regarding Stagg's relationship with Okabe. In 1910, Coach Stagg took the University of Chicago's baseball team to Japan, which was very out of the ordinary for the times. He would end up taking the team to Japan in 1915, 1920, and 1925 as well. One of the people Stagg met on these trips was none other than Heta Okabe. These two would become friends who would correspond with each other even after Okabe moved back to Japan. Okabe would return to Japan in 1920 and began teaching football to four-year students at the Tokyo Normal School and the college students at Tokyo Higher Normal School. He believed that football was one of the purest ways to develop character in young men. He was credited for writing Japan's first guidebook on American football in 1925, explaining what football was and how it was played in a report called The Sports of the World. Though Okabe is credited with introducing the game to Japan, it wasn't able to gain much traction until another person came along, Paul Rush, who's known today as the father of Japan's American football. Rush was born in Indiana and grew up in Louisville, Kentucky. He ended up joining the army and fought in World War I. After the war, Rush joined the international YMCA staff who sent him to Japan in 1925 to help them deal with the destruction from the Kanto earthquake on the island of Honsu. Paul Rush was heavily associated with the church in Japan and was invited to teach economics at the college they had started there, St. Paul's University. After spending time in Japan, Rush started to miss home and one night in 1934, he got together with a group of his friends and they decided that they were going to teach football to university students in Japan. That night, they formed the Intercollegiate Football League in Japan. The league consisted of Americans who worked at Waseda, Keio, and St. Paul's universities. Other Americans and Englishmen who played football and rugby back home that lived in Japan participated in the league as well. 
Their first game was played at the Meiji Shrine Stadium in Tokyo on November 29, 1934, with a team formed from players of Meiji, Waseda, and St. Paul's Universities against the Yokohama Athletic and Country Club squad, or the YACC. The game was broadcasted over the National Japanese Sports Radio Network. Rush was even able to get a band to perform at halftime for the game, where they performed the national anthems for the US, the UK, and Japan. They ended up drawing in a crowd of anywhere from 15 to 20,000 people who were curious as to what the Americans were playing. With the band, the brutality of football at the time, and the large crowd, the Japanese viewers were immediately intrigued by the game. One Japanese writer wrote, The game took to them from the start. The YACC would win the game 37-7, marking the beginning of Intercollegiate Football League in Japan. They were able to get equipment, uniforms, and a rulebook together that was translated in Japanese. In 1935, an all-collegiate Japan team was formed, consisting of top players from the colleges playing football. They attempted to play American teams in order to build relations with each other. Leading up to World War II, things were tense between Japan and the U.S. In the spring of 1935, two all-star teams from the Pacific Coast came to Japan to play exhibition games and teach Japan the game. Around a year later, the Japan League sent a team to California to play the Southern California All-Stars on January 3, 1937. They were able to play an American team, watch professional teams, and even got to watch the Rose Bowl that season. On their way home, they even stopped in Honolulu and played the Roosevelt High School team, tying them 0-0. After the success of this trip, other teams in Japan were formed, further growing the sport. In January of 1938, Paul Rush helped establish the Japanese American Football Association, or the JAFA, as the first nationwide official body governing American football. That March, the JAFA set up their first East vs. West championship game between Japanese teams. It brought in a crowd of 25,000 people, and the East team beat the West 21 to nothing. The game was even broadcasted over the radio again by a Japanese sports network. In 1940, the JAFA was renamed to what is translated as Armor Ball, taking America out of the name due to poor relations with the US and with the league not wanting to offend the Japanese military leading up to the war. Things started to change going into the 40s, with the beginning of World War II. Rush would be arrested immediately after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor and was later deported back to the US in June of 1942 as part of a wartime prisoner exchange. Japan supposedly even banned the playing of American sports in 1943. The war between Japan and the US ended on September 2nd, 1945. Rush would return to Japan in 1946 and American football would get reintroduced with the first high schools forming teams and playing each other. That year, Japan decided to host another East-West game, naming it the Koshien Bowl. In 1948, American representatives dubbed it the Rice Bowl. Club teams began to be organized in the late 1950s, and the first company-sponsored team, Mitsubishi Jushi, was established in 1961. More companies became involved with teams in 1971, providing more funding and further growth to the sport. <laughs> In 1970, Japan had their first high school championship game. In 1989, they would call this game the Christmas Bowl, and it's still played annually today. In 1971, Utah State, led by coach Chuck Mills and future NFL quarterback Tony Adams, traveled to Japan, where they played two exhibition games against the Japanese All-Star team. This greatly impacted the spread of American football in Japan, and led to many other teams offering to play the Japanese All-Star team. BYU played two games against them in 1977 and returned the next season to play UNLV at Yokohama Stadium. From 1977 to 1993, a regular season game for American colleges was played in Japan. In 1979, Notre Dame played Miami in Japan. This led to a video series made by Notre Dame starring Japanese TV star Sayuri Takashima, where they taught the fundamentals of football. The game played in Japan in 1988 was notable with Oklahoma State beating Texas Tech 45 to 42. The Cowboys own Barry Sanders had his last game of the regular season and he would go on to win the Heisman Trophy while in Japan and had a video call into the ceremony to accept his trophy. Starting in the 1990s, the Ivy League All-Star team has played a game coined the Dream Bowl against Japan and it's still played even today every January. In 1986, the NFL began the American Bowl as a preseason exhibition game to promote American football in foreign countries. Throughout this time, the NFL had more games in Japan than in any other country, not including Canada. It was around 14 games, until the UK surpassed them in 2012. 
Interestingly enough, the NFL has not played a game there since 2005. These games greatly impacted the popularity of American football in Japan. Japan created a professional league in 1971, consisting of company-owned teams and club teams. For the company-owned teams, actual employees of the company make up the players of the team. The league did well, but in the 1990s, banks started pulling out their sponsorships due to economic struggles, eliminating many of the company-led teams and severely stunting the growth of American football in Japan. From 1984 to 2022, Japan's main championship game, the Rice Bowl, was played against the best team from the X-League and their best college team. From 1984 to 2009, the series between the two leagues was evenly matched, with the collegiate team having 12 wins and the X-League having 14 wins. After the 2009 game, the X-League wouldn't lose another Rice Bowl, causing the JAFA to reform the game in 2022 so that it was played between the two best X-League teams. Now I want to get into how both the collegiate and professional leagues work. For college football, Japan currently has 8 leagues spread out around the country. Three of the leagues are in the East and five of them are in the West. The best team from each side plays in a national championship game called the Koshiyam Bowl. Each league has at least two tiers of programs, where the top tier is the only one who sends teams to the postseason tournament. Teams can be promoted or relegated between tiers, much how like most of soccer works today. Starting in 2024, the JAFA announced that they will be moving to a 12-team playoff format for their championship games moving forward, eliminating the East vs. West format they originally had. The X League is currently the highest level of football in Japan. It was founded in 1971 as the Japan American Football League. The name was changed in 1997 to the X League. The league is made up of four tiers, with X1 Super at the top, and below that is X1 Area, X2, and X3. Like in their college football system, teams can be promoted and relegated due to performance between divisions. There are two types of teams, company teams, where only employees of that particular sponsoring company may play and club teams where anyone can try out. There used to be around a 50-50 split between company teams and club teams, but that's shifted to where there's now mainly club teams. At this moment, teams are allowed to have up to four players from the US. Only two could be on the field at the same time. The X League has two seasons, one in the spring and their main season which is played in the fall. There's an eight-team playoff to get to the championship game for the fall season, which is called the Rice Bowl like I mentioned earlier. They currently play using NCAA rules and they play 12 minute quarters during the regular season. There was an interview I looked at by current Panasonic Impulse player Joshua Cox where he described what it's like playing in the X League. He was quoted saying, it's weird because they're extremely hush hush about everything, but it's a big league and the fan base is really good. The Japanese culture and loyalty to sports sticks out a lot. In college, Cox played for Central Michigan and went to Italy to play in the American Football League with the Balonzo Giants. Cox states that the X League reached out to him through Instagram and told him to come try out. In my head, I was like, there's football in Japan? I wasn't too sure about it, but then they sent me the flight, so I might as well go. Cox has been playing for the Panasonic Impulse since 2019. I even noticed that he recorded an interception during this current season's Rice Bowl played earlier in January. Cox noticed that compared to other international leagues he's played in, the Japanese league was more organized and professional. Cox explained in the interview how it works from the US players joining teams. He stated that players are starting to move around teams more than in the past. After the season, every American on each team signs a one-year deal. Once that contract is up, players are free to sign wherever, but there's a deadline where teams must have their Americans in. There are no trades and they can only join through free agency pickups. Cox even noticed that there's a charm that comes with playing in Japan. You'll go to these fields, he says, and you'll be surrounded by mountains, or off the water, or right downtown. Those are some of the best venues I've played in for sure, even compared to American schools. During this interview, Cox suggested that for American football to grow in Japan, they need to increase their collaboration with the NFL like they have in other countries. If you want to see what the day-to-day -day is like for a US player playing in the X League, I highly suggest you go over to Colby Campbell's YouTube channel. He's been vlogging about his experience playing for the Nojima Sagamihara Rise. Colby's a linebacker who played college football at Presbyterian College for four years and would later play as a grad transfer for Duke in his final season. Definitely go check out his channel to experience what the X League is all about and learn a little bit about Japanese culture. I also wanted to recommend the X League's own YouTube channel where they post highlights to most of their games and where they have a lot of content surrounding their football league. They have a show hosted by retired X League player BJ Beatty where he interviews different athletes that play in the league. One interview I watched was with Arwan Adeyemi, someone who's been playing Japanese-American football for over 10 years. 
He describes some of the changes he's seen while playing in the league. This was a great interview series that I believe just started. Definitely go check it out and give BJ some support. Appreciate this, right? It's, uh, this is part of that upward trajectory that mm -hmm. we're talking about, right? Growing the game in Japan. And hopefully some, um, some kids can see this, right? Yeah. Some Japanese kids can see this, some American kids can see this, and uh, they can be inspired to be the next generation that grows the yep. game. I you know, like yep. I said earlier, you know, at the end of the day, the NFL will take credit for the growth of the game worldwide. Yeah. But it is guys like you and I, it is, it is those guys that have really done uh, the legwork on the ground mm -hmm. uh, to continue to grow the game, to continue to grow the game. So I, I appreciate that. And, and this has been fun. Hopefully we can sit down again. Hopefully the global popularity of football continues to increase and the game continues to spread across different countries and cultures. I think it's important for us as American football consumers to aid in this process. When we see a country that has a league that has a lot of promise with a rise in talent over the years, we should be encouraging and help do our part in growing the game. I'm bought in though on Japanese American football and we'll definitely be watching more of it in future seasons. Thank you for watching the College Football History Channel. If you like what you see, make sure you subscribe to the channel as I'll be posting more videos like this in the future. Feel free to reach out to share your thoughts, or let me know if you have any suggestions for future episodes.